This week on Maker Update, a CNC mug maker, the future of 3D printed shoes, Particle's new IoT rules engine, a kid noise alarm, a crown for Princess Peach, a hoverboard robot, and an over-the-top trampoline mod. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. We're getting started a little later than usual this week, but I hope everyone's doing well. I've got a big show for you with a lot of projects and even some news, but first let's get started with the project of the week. Michael Graham has been hard at work creating this mug-mounted CNC pen plotter he calls the Mugomatic. The project is made up mostly of 3D printed parts, three servos, an Arduino Nano, and a custom motor driver board he calls the Tiny CNC PCB. All assembled, you can send it G-code files just like a 3D printer or a plotter and it will write your design to the mug. He also shows off an expansion thumbstick that you can use to manually draw designs with the plotter mechanism. It's a silly but fun idea. He's got a Kickstarter plan for these in November, but you can find the part files and code to get started on your own over on his Hackaday project page. It's time for some news. The future of 3D printed shoes might be here sooner than you think. YouTuber RC Life On printed up this 2014 sneaker design on Thingiverse, originally made by Ignacio Garce, and found that they're actually somewhat functional. He printed up a version in a cushy Ninja Flex filament similar to rubber and another using thermoplastic polyurethane. After giving them a test run, he found that the Ninja Flex version was more comfortable while the polyurethane offered better support. I just think the fact that they held up at all shows a lot of potential for other designs. If we could marry up 3D printing culture and sneaker culture, there really could be a huge movement here. In other news, IoT board maker Particle has announced a new drag and drop IoT application builder called Rules Engine. It's currently in beta, but it works like a kind of if this then that for creating interactive cloud-based applications for Particle boards. So if you want a temperature sensor to trigger a text message or a web app to trigger a relay switch that turns a device on and off, this new system allows you to map all of that out visually. I have more projects to share with you. Jeremy S. Cook made this interactive sound level meter that blinks when the volume level gets too high. The idea was to make something so his kids could see when they're being too loud. Of course, Jeremy points out it also acts as a fun game for kids to test how loud they can be. Honestly, I just love the look of this project. Jeremy is using a sandwich of plywood and clear acrylic, both cut on a CNC router. But I can also imagine getting something close to this with a hole saw. Inside, you've got an Arduino Nano, a small microphone breakout board, a power switch, rechargeable battery, and a strip of addressable LEDs. There's also a dip switch in here that allows you to change into different modes, including one that's just there to look pretty. The Ruiz brothers have a new cosplay project up. It's a 3D printed Princess Peach crown with light up jewels. A $10 Gemma M0 board, a small rechargeable battery pack, and some of those big gummy style LEDs are all you need for electronics. The crown design includes a fitting for a 3D printed headband to keep the tiny thing on your head. There's also an optional set of horns that you can print out to make this into a Bowsette crown. On Hackaday, Isabel Samova has a guide on making a DIY robot based on those motorized hoverboards that were all the rage a few years ago. She calls this the Hoverbot. It involves stripping the hoverboard parts from its frame and creating a new one. You'll also need to connect up a Raspberry Pi and a USB webcam. A clean looking JavaScript application controls the whole thing. You can find everything you need on the project's Hackaday and GitHub pages. I just think it's cool to see old hoverboards put to good use. On Makershare, Mao Wu posted a guide on making this interactive trampoline that includes multiple rows of lights and a touch screen with sounds and games that respond to the jumping. It's a cool, crazy rig and the guide is light on details, but it's a cool concept that you can build on. Finally, Andrew Bond has a design for this coin sorter over on Thingiverse. It's a multi-part build that will take some time to print and assemble, but you get a useful payoff at the end. I have a bunch of tips to share this week. Too many tips, maybe. Adafruit has a new product in stock that's pretty unique. It's called the Zero Stem, and it's a little $6 adapter for your Pi Zero that turns it into a USB dongle. It can pull power over the connection, and more importantly, with a little coating, you can make your Pi act as a USB device. On Mixing, Gareth Branwin's Tips of the Week column includes a bunch of Bob Claggett tips, including advice on choosing your first 3D printer. There's also a great one from C. Jane Drill on using a carpenter's pencil as a ruler. On Thingiverse, I found this 3D printed 9-volt battery holder by Andrew Yaravoy. 
If you have a bunch of jumper wires handy, this design lets you just snap them in as battery leads for a simple 9-volt battery pack. Also on Thingiverse, Mohit Boit posted a design for an LED jig that allows you to create these beautiful copper wire matrix designs. And if you're not already following Mohit on Instagram, get on it, his work is gorgeous. The Adafruit Jobs Board is back up and running with postings for engineering and maker-related jobs. It's free to use and free to post. And over on the Cool Tools blog, I have a video up comparing the differences between standard PVC-coated hookup wire and silicone-coated wire. I even do a fun little torch test. Maker Fairs! A ton of fairs this weekend, including Denver, Colorado, Rome, Italy, Shenzhen, China, Houston, Texas, Aarhus, Denmark, Bidford, Maine, Chisnau in the Republic of Moldova, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Reno Sparks, Nevada. There's also the Maker Music Festival in Sebastopol this Saturday at Chimera Arts. And coming up on November 2nd through the 4th, there's the Hackaday Supercon in Pasadena, California. It looks like a great lineup of talks and workshops. If you're in the area or if you can swing into some kind of professional development for work, don't miss it. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Consider joining the Maker Update email list where you can get these show notes emailed out to you automatically every week with a few bonus projects thrown in. And as a reminder, I'm not a Make employee. I do this show because I love doing this show. I volunteer my time to do it. My wife thinks I'm crazy. But if you don't think I'm crazy, consider supporting the show on Patreon and you can do that for as little as 25 cents a show, all right? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.